she sent me this notebook right when I moved to LA. She wrote a letter in it. My golden son, reach for the stars. I love you so. Then I wrote a bunch of jokes about jacking off in the notebook. If I sing the song Party to Death, which is a song about my mom drinking herself to death, which is a comedy song to me, I think, whatever. <laughs> if I sing it in my own voice, it becomes more emotional and I get sad singing it. But if I sing in a funny British guy voice, it's funny. I, I, there's something about it. It's like a detachment, you know? It's, it's, it's uh, yeah, I, I just, I think, uh, I think that's why I started doing that. Just, just almost like a, assuming the character of like a rock and roll guy helps me kind of get through it without a, having a meltdown. <laughs> My mom was determined to make it until the day she died. And she never did. She never made it in the way that she wanted to. When I was a really little kid, I thought of my mom as being famous. And I remember going to school and thinking like, these people have these normal parents, but my mom's a celebrity because she played to 15 people at a bar the night before. And then as I got older, I, I, was, I really resented having to go hang out there all the time and watch her play. Once I, got, I moved away and started to kind of pursue my own dreams in the entertainment biz, I started to reflect and, and ha have a lot of, you know, nostalgic kind of nice feelings about that and how lucky I was to kind of get to see that side of things. And it wasn't until recently, just going back to shoot it, I, I always thought of it as like kind of a, a sad thing to end up being a bar band, but then going back, and which is such a big city jackass kind of way of thinking. It shaped me in a, in a lot of ways. I think growing up down there was great in the South, especially being like a punk kid, like I was so into skating and punk music. Like it was very easy to go like, I don't like that, you know, I'm not like that. It's, there's a lot of things to rebel against down there. I don't know if, if I grew up in LA or New York, I don't know what I would rebel against because everybody's cool. <laughs> Me and my brother always played in bands mm -hmm. because of her. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really lucky growing up to be like, oh, I like this Blink-182 song. And then my mom would listen and go, oh, let me show you how to play it. And she'd like figure it out and then show it me how to play it on the bass or the guitar. Um, and so I think music, it, there, that was no question. Mm -hmm. There's no question to be a musician. And and I, I would try, I tried all through high school to be in, you know, emo bands that, emo and hardcore bands that uh, sometimes had, had a bit of a, you know, there was some hope for a couple of these bands, but it didn't really work out. I'm bad at this. My dad came back. It's exciting. Dads don't typically come back, but when it was convenient for him, he decided to show back. <laughs> I might hit it perfect right now. Here we go. It's easier for me to write a song and to come up with a guitar riff or something on the piano and a melody. And, and it's easier for me to write lyrics that usually tend to be like kind of depressing and sad. Um, it's way more difficult for me to come up with jokes and comedy. I, uh, I'm not really very good at observing things and going, here's why, can you believe that there's a Tesla truck or whatever it is you know here's why that's funny in my mind I'm like that, that, this is interesting I don't know like one time I got a writing job on a sketch show and they were like write a sketch about Drake wearing sweaters and I was like what why <laughs> they're like because it's funny he's a rapper and he wears sweaters and I was like I think he looks good in his sweaters <laughs> I'm just not a talented writer in that kind of way. I have to experience things and so it takes a longer time. I believe if, if any singer had a, a 10 minutes to explain the context of a song mm -hmm. and then he sang the song, there would be moments where everybody would laugh. Sometimes I'll be trying to tell a joke for six months and then I, I can't make it funny and then if I just sing, put the joke into a song and sing it with a, like a little bit of a melody, people then find that funny. So. 
kind of maybe a little bit of a cheat. I was in a relationship for a while, it didn't work out, not sure why. Her two favorite things to do are dance and cocaine, and my two favorite things to do are feel left out and judge. <laughs> Your music, they described it as dark wave bangers. <laughs> which I thought was quite a descriptor. <laughs> and I mean, do, <laughs> how does that label make you feel? Is that, do, you, do you agree with that? Is that how you describe your music? I didn't come up with dark wave bangers. That's hmm. kind of cool. I like dark wave bangers. Yeah. The versions of the songs that I toured around singing were these demos that I used pretty basic synthesizers and a uh, basic drum machine on. And so it did have this kind of synth dark wave feel to it. But on the record, we we beefed the songs up a lot and, and gave them um, different feelings and stuff. I like dark wave bangers though. It's a great, it's dark a wave great comedy bangers, <laughs> which is biting me in the ass all the time. Wait, because, how so? <laughs> because people don't know that I'm singing funny stuff. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> a lot of the times, like I'm, I really want to do late night and stuff like that. And people are like, what is this? This isn't <laughs> like they, you know, watch a set or something trying to get on whatever late night show and they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> well, this isn't funny. He's just singing a song and I'm like, oh yeah, you got to read the lyrics. Yeah, or listen. <laughs> or really listen. <laughs> it's really biting me in the ass. There's been often times where people will go, oh, I was, I saw, I just walked into the room and you were playing a song and I was like, oh, this is a fun song. And then they go, I didn't realize that it was about like uh, dancing with a dad or, or whatever the, you know, whatever bullshit I'm singing about. Like, I feel like when Jesus comes back, he'll be like, okay, first order of business. How's about we remove all the memorabilia from the worst day of my life? Mostly what I, I really want people to do after they watch this is go look up my mom. Is That's my end goal is for people to be aware of the music that she made because she, her and uh, my aunt made some really cool music and nobody ever got to hear it. Whenever I went back home, uh, I found all their old master tapes and, and they're all getting uh, mixed, and, mixed and remastered now and I'm going to put them out. And so what I really want is for everybody to watch it and then go figure out who my mom was, I think. And then hopefully she'll get to live on and, in a way that uh, she didn't get to now, which I, I think that I, I have a lot of faith that, that people are gonna really dig her music. And, and then also maybe they'll buy like a ticket to see me do a show too. <laughs>